Born in Birmingham, what's special about this city that seems to be a constant search of rock stars? In Birmingham, where I was born, it is an industrial city and many, many years ago in the Industrial Revolution it was the centre of industry and the part where I live is it called the Black Country and they called it that because in the Industrial Revolution there were so many small workshops making nails and small metal parts that everything was black with soot and the only white bits were when people smiled so everything was black they called it the black country and i think the the heaviness of the sound of many bands from birmingham is a reflection of this industry at times in my life when i had no work i worked in a factory and i worked a press or i worked a polishing machine so I think that is a part of what Birmingham is about. All right, second question. You have always said the most important thing for you is music, that you stay away from drugs, uh, from drugs and alcohol. Is that restraint the secret of your perfectly keep voice? Um, it is a personal choice that I don't drink any alcohol before I perform and I've never taken drugs, I never think about taking drugs because for me the important thing is to sing and I love to sing. I'm not a natural talented singer, I learned to sing because that's what I wanted to do as a profession. So it is up to people to choose their own path. But someone said to me, and I feel this is very true, that when you are the singer, then your body is your instrument. And people that I know, friends that sing opera professionally, then it is the same thing, it is posture, it is being very aware of what you eat and when you eat and the things that are destructive to your voice and the things that will help your voice. And for me to sing well and to keep my voice on the tour is not to have a rock and roll lifestyle, it is to have a life that is more disciplined and I just can't talk much and the further we get into tour the more quiet I have to become to protect my voice but also for me it is very important that I am able to put the passion into my songs on the stage and give that to my fans and if I don't have my full voice, then it hurts me because I feel I cannot give my fans my best. All right. Nowadays, after more than 20 years, people are starting to appreciate praise albums with Iron Maiden evermore. Nevertheless, you were blamed from Blues Living when you were just the singer who came to take this place of the world. What do you think? What, why do you think that happened? Did you notice he was performing? Bruce Dickinson and I have been friends before Iron Maiden and Bruce Dickinson was very supportive of me when I was in Iron Maiden and after Iron Maiden when he had his own radio show he helped me and played my music on his show and my newest video for Escape Velocity is actually filmed at his aircraft simulator. So he has helped me a great deal. And I think for all of us, if we fall in love with a band and we fall in love with a voice, it is very difficult to, to make an adjustment to a new voice. 
And for me, I had incredible support from thousands of fans all over the world, but there are some fans that hated me, hated my voice, and they still do. And that's okay, because it's not for everyone. My style is very different to Bruce, and when they chose me to replace Bruce, I was very surprised because my voice is so different, but it is the most incredible job. As a heavy metal singer, it's perhaps the number one job that you can have, which is to be the singer of Iron Maiden. So my passion and my heart was there, and the music that we made on X Factor and Virtual 11, which are being re-released now on vinyl, was incredible and I think people that perhaps didn't like the change at the time now they go back and listen differently with fresh ears to the records and the music that we made then and perhaps that's why now I become more popular than I ever was after Iron Maiden. Now more than 20 years now people really start to take notice of what Blaze Bailey is doing. Okay. Another, another member of Iron Maiden. You have uh, always a, good, a great relationship with Steve Harris. In fact, you say that you have learned so much from him about composing. And even, and even you both were preparing the next album with Iron Maiden when they were told you were in need to a moment. How do you take that blow? Have you ever known the reason why that happened? The main reason that I was leaving Iron Maiden is because of EMI and the business, that is what I believe. At the time Black Sabbath had the reunion with Ozzy, Deep Purple had the original lineup with Ian Gillen reunion and CD sales worldwide were going down and I think the record company put a lot of pressure on the band to have a reunion. So for me it was a horrible time but it is still a time I think of very fondly and Steve Harris was really like a mentor to me and taught me so much about songwriting so those values and the things that he taught me are things that I put into my own work now. Right, right. Many of those ideas didn't make it to Iron Maiden. Did it did make it to your own album, Sil Silicon Messia? Can we all call the Haydn album of Iron Maiden with place? The first album, Silicon Messia? What I was doing, and it's just a normal thing for most musicians, when you have ideas, on tour or at home or wherever you are you catch them with a dictaphone or you make a note and I had a lot of ideas of my own that I wanted to work on with Steve Harris and Dave Murray for the next I Am Maiden album and one of those was Stare at the Sun and another one was Silicon Messiah which are on my first album and another one um, was Ghost in the Machine and those are all songs on my Silicon Messiah album. So I would have liked to work with the guys on those songs but I think the album came out really really well and a lot of my fans say it's their favourite album up till now. So really I, I think it's just a part of life and songs sometimes they're like children or like dreams or like butterflies you catch them at the moment and if you don't catch them then they disappear right. however, however we can find some of your stuff on in brave new world like stream of mirrors do you feel like if you stay longer you have recorded that album i think that's a very difficult thing to say brave new world is a really great iron maiden album and I think it marks a real turning point for Iron Maiden. After X Factor, 
and Virtual Eleven to really commit to the longer forms of songwriting. And I think that it's uh, Brave New World is a very good album. It's something that I listen to a lot after. But for me, my favorite song of the Brave New World album is Blood Brothers, which I think is uh, an incredible, incredible emotional journey. All right. You just released a new CD, Infinite Entertainment 2. There will be a third part of this conceptual history. Can you tell us about this history? This is part two of the three albums. This is the first one, Infinite Entanglement. This is Endure and Survive. And next year comes part three of this trilogy, this story. It is about a man who does not know if he is human in the beginning. He is on a spaceship and goes on a journey across the galaxy to find a new Earth, a new planet. And this album is what happens on that journey and what happens to him as he gets close to the planet 1,000 years later. He discovers that he is a machine. He has human consciousness downloaded into a machine body. And that is the story of this album. And next year, at the same time, comes part three. And that story is obviously in my head and in my heart, and that I won't tell you. All right, all right. Last, last one, some time ago, you said something that honors you as a singer and most important as a fan. You quote, I'm obstacle small, I'm a heavy metal underground singer. I have the support of some, of some fans, and they keep me going. I am really proud of honor that. What does it take of honor that? that? What does it take for an artist to be able to go from heaven to hell after being in, in Ever Maiden? I think the most important thing is the music. And even though it's a great job to be in Iron Maiden, it is just as tough as any big job. Just as tough as being in the World Cup football team, you're expected to win every time. For me, now, I'm not a part of the mainstream music business. I am the record label, and I'm supported directly by my fans around the world. There is no big marketing, there's no uh, rich parents, there's no lottery money. It's my fans and me. And my fans trust me enough that they pre-order my album, and then, I can go and make my album. And journalists are not allowed to hear the album before the fans. Because I'm so small, it doesn't make a difference. They can't do anything. So the fans are the people that hear the album first. It is their review and their thoughts about the album. The people that know me and support me Theirs is the most important view for me. I don't care what journalists say, I don't care what anybody else says. The people that understand what I'm doing, it is their opinion that's the most important. And I'm very, very lucky to have so many fans support me around the world because I'm just a very, very small artist. I'm no better than any other singer. I'm no better than any other person. I just do the best I can with what I have and I'm very lucky that people like me.